what is the fastest way to insert a large number of records into a database. This is a so-called bulk insert, and in this video we're going to explore a few options for doing a bulk insert into a SQL Server database, and we're going to be writing some benchmarks to see which approach is the fastest. So before we dive into benchmarking the bulk insert operation, let's spend a brief moment and discuss where bulk inserts could be useful. I'm going to mention a few practical examples of where you might need a bulk insert operation to improve the performance of your system. And the first example is when you are doing a migration of the data from one server to another. A good example would be migrating the data from a legacy database into a new system. Batch processing is another excellent use case for bulk inserts. Imagine you have a nightly job that runs once every day and it downloads a very large file containing some information that you want to store in the database. Bulk inserts is an excellent fit for this type of processing. And another use case could be the initial loading of data for a new system when you are setting up a new service. You want to fill the database with some data so that your service can function. And you can use bulk inserts to make this setup faster. In most practical use cases I've seen, the data for a bulk insert would come from a large file. For example, this could be a CSV file that contains a large number of records that we need to load, transform, and then store inside of our database. So this could be part of your ETL process. Another common source for the data would be somewhere from the cloud. This could be another service that you own, or it could be a third-party API that you use to synchronize some data. In both cases, we are going to end up writing all of this data into our database, and we are concerned with how we can implement this insert the fastest way possible. Now, in order to find out which approach is the fastest way to perform a bulk insert in .NET, we're going to be writing some benchmarks. All of the benchmarks that we're going to implement as part of this video are going to follow this simple flow. The first step is going to be to create a batch of records that we need to insert into the database. And the second step is going to be the bulk insert operation. So this is what we are going to be benchmarking, and I wanted to highlight that generating the batch of records that we are going to insert is also going to be a part of the benchmark, even though it's only going to be a small fraction compared to the network round trip time that is going to take to insert all of the data into the database. And now we are ready to jump into the code and implement some bulk inserts. This is the user entity that we are going to be inserting into the database as part of the bulk insert operation. It's a simple class with a primary key and a few properties, an email, first name, last name, and phone number, and it's configured as part of my database context. So I also have an application DB context. This is an EF core database context with a fixed connection string to a SQL Server database, and it only contains one database set representing the respective table in the database. You can see I'm connecting to the SQL Server provider, and I'm configuring that my user entity uses the identifier property as the key. However, I don't want to generate this value on add, I'm going to be providing it myself. And now let's jump into the actual benchmarks and start writing our bulk insert operations. I'm going to start by defining a private static read-only field, there's going to be a faker instance, which is coming from the bogus library, and I'm going to use this to randomly initialize a user instance. Then I'm going to create a property that's going to represent the batch size for my benchmarks, and I'm going to use the params attribute from benchmark.net that allows me to specify the value for this property. So let's start out with a batch size of 100, and this is going to represent how many records we're going to be inserting into the database. Then I'm going to add a helper method called get users, they're just going to create an enumerable that's going to range from one to the value in the size property, and it's going to initialize a new user instance with random property values. This is going to be one batch of records that we want to insert into the database, and we're going to benchmark how fast we are able to insert this array of users into our SQL Server instance. So let's start by introducing our first benchmark, and this is going to be the naive approach, which I'm adding just for reference, because this isn't a very performant way how you could insert a large number of records into the database. So I'm going to use my EF core database context by creating a new database context instance. Then we're going to call the get users method to obtain a collection of users. And then we're going to loop through them, add the user into the database context, and we're going to call save changes async. And this is going to immediately go to the database and insert a new user. And we're going to continue doing this for every new user that we have. Now, why is this not the best approach? Well, this is because we will be calling the database once for every user in the batch. 
this isn't really a bulk insert it's a one by one insert and you will see that this is going to be the slowest approach i'm also starting with ef core because this is something that you're probably familiar with and as you will see it's actually not that slow when it comes to inserting a large number of records the next benchmark that i'm going to introduce is going to be very similar to the previous approach except we are first going to add all of the users into the database context and then we're going to call save changes async once and this is going to persist all of the users as part of one transaction into the database now what ef core is going to do behind the scenes is it's going to batch a large number of insert statements into one round trip to the database execute all of those and then run the next batch of insert statements and this is much faster than going to the database for each user i'm also going to add a very similar approach to this one where instead of going through the for each loop and inserting all of the users i'm going to call the add range method that's exposed on the database set and this is just a shorthand way of writing this for each loop where we are still adding all of the users into our change tracker and then calling save changes async so far we have three examples that use ef core and let's introduce another one that's going to use dapper so what i'm going to do in this benchmark is open up a sql connection where i'm going to pass in my connection string I will make sure that this connection is open and I'm going to run this insert statement using Dapper. So what I'm going to do is obtain the users. I'm going to convert them into an anonymous object and then persist this into a user's collection. And then I'm going to use Dapper to call the execute async method where I can pass in my SQL command and the collection of records that I want to insert into the database. Now, as you can see here, I'm writing just a simple insert statement inserting into the users table and I'm specifying which values I'm inserting. So this will be the email, first name, last name, and phone number. And then I'm specifying the actual values as the arguments for this command. And what Dapper is going to do is it's going to unwrap my collection of users and convert them into the respective parameters for my SQL command. So this is another approach that you can try to insert a large number of records into the database. Now, a different approach that would also be using SQL would be using common table expressions to implement a bulk insert. I'm not going to showcase this implementation approach because I don't want to have too many benchmarks, but I did want to mention this as a viable alternative for doing a bulk insert. The next example I want to show you is very interesting. We are again going to use EF core to do a bulk insert, but we're going to call the bulk insert async method. So this is literally a bulk insert using our database context. And if you're scratching your head and this method looks unfamiliar, that's because this comes from an external NuGet package. Let me show you what this package is called. So the NuGet package I'm using is called EF Core Bulk Extensions, and it contains many useful extension methods for doing CRUD operations on SQL databases. This NuGet package is free to use if you are doing less than $1 million yearly in revenue. And if you have more revenue than that, then you will need to buy a license. So I just wanted to mention that, but for our intents and purposes, this is going to be free to use. So that's what I'm going to use in one of our benchmarks. And then let me show you one more approach for doing bulk inserts. And this is probably one that you may have heard of before, and this will be the SQL bulk copy class. So let me walk you through how this works. We need to create a new SQL bulk copy instance, and we can provide it the connection string into our database. And then we need to set up how we are going to run the bulk copy operation. We need to set what is the destination table name, which is what I'm doing here. Then I'm defining my column mappings from my data source to my data destination. The destination is going to be the names of the columns in the database and my data source are going to be the column names inside of the data table. So this is something that you will have to do with the SQL bulk copy operation. You need to provide it an instance of a data table so that it can do the bulk insert. To actually perform the bulk insert operation, you can call the write to server async method and this will do the bulk insert. And then the argument for this method is a data table. So I created a helper method called get users data table. And what this is going to do is create a new data table instance, define the column mappings and what are the types of the respective columns. Then it's going to fill the data table rows and finally return the prepared data table instance that I can use for my bulk copy operation. If you have another approach for doing bulk inserts, let me know in the comments what that approach is. And now let's actually run our benchmark with the batch size of 100 to start out and let's examine the benchmark results and see which approach is the fastest. 
So these are the benchmark results with the batch size of 100 and let's examine how each operation did. So as you can imagine, the EF core at 1 by 1 approach is the slowest one, taking 21 milliseconds on average. And then we have the add 1 by 1 and add range approaches with EF core, which are very similar, around 2.5 milliseconds. The dabber approach is surprisingly slower at 13 milliseconds, and this is because it has to unwrap my collection of users and insert them one by one. So it doesn't do the batching approach that EF core does when you call the add range method. The next one is the EF extensions bulk insert. And you can see it's decently fast, around two and a half milliseconds. So just a bit faster than the add range approach. And we're going to discuss why this is the case. And we have the SQL bulk copy at number one at just 2.1 milliseconds. So you can see that all of these approaches are very close to one another. And you might ask yourself, why should we even bother with the SQL bulk copy approach, which is more complex to implement, or the bulk extensions, which is an external library, why wouldn't I just use add range in all cases? And this is because we are working with a very small data set when it comes to a bulk insert. I'm going to update the size to be 10,000 and then rerun the benchmarks and you will see how our results change. Here are the benchmark results for inserting 10,000 records into the database and this time you can see the results are quite different. The EF core naive approach where we add one record by one into the database takes almost 10 seconds to insert 10,000 records. The add range approach is considerably faster. It only takes 250 milliseconds. The dapper approach with raw SQL takes around 1.2 seconds. And then we have the bulk insert using EF core extensions taking 92 milliseconds and the SQL bulk copy as the clear winner taking only 79 milliseconds to insert 10,000 records into the database. If we now compare the SQL bulk copy to the naive approach, you can see the difference is staggering. We have almost 10 seconds versus 79 milliseconds. This is also much faster than the add range approach and is going to continue becoming faster as the batch size for the bulk insert increases. Now, in order to save us some time, I've compiled a list of results for various batch sizes into an article that I released on my website. So now we're going to take a look at that. So if you head over to this page on my website, and I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video, you will find an article called Fast SQL Bulk Inserts with C Sharp and EF4. And if you scroll down to the bottom of this article, you're going to see a table containing the benchmark results for all of the examples that I just showed you in this video. So this is the naive approach with different batch sizes. And you can see that after 100,000 records, it becomes so slow that I didn't even want to run the benchmark. Then we have Dapper, and you can see how the performance slowly decreases the bigger the batch size becomes. For inserting 1 million records, Dapper takes around 109 seconds. The next two approaches that you see here are the add range approach with EF core, and you can see that the performance between them is very similar. And this approach is relatively fast, even up to 100,000 records, where it takes about two seconds to insert that many records. And to insert 1 million records into the database, it takes about 21 seconds. And now let's take a look at the last two approaches, the bulk extensions approach with EF core and the bulk copy approach with the SQL bulk copy class. You can see that they are considerably faster than the EF core add range approach with bulk copy coming out as the clear winner taking only seven seconds to insert 1 million records into the database. Whereas the EF core add range approach takes three times as much at 21 seconds. The bulk extensions approach is slightly slower than the bulk copy because it works with EF core, which is another layer of abstraction on top. However, if you don't care about squeezing the most possible performance out of your bulk inserts, then using this approach with EF core bulk extensions is perfectly acceptable because it's very simple to implement. You don't need to deal with the bulk copy class. You don't need to deal with data tables. You just create your database context, add your entities and call the respective bulk insert method. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest developments in .NET, EF core or ASP.NET core, then I invite you to subscribe to the .NET weekly newsletter. We are about to cross 50,000 subscribers and you will get one interesting article every Saturday morning. All you have to do is add your email address here and press subscribe. Let me know in the comments which of these approaches you would use for a bulk insert in your project. I would probably go for the SQL bulk copy approach. 
However, the bulk extensions with EF Core comes as a close second. If you want to grab the source code for this video and all of the videos that I release, then you can subscribe to my Patreon. Also, take a look at my courses about clean architecture and the modular monolith. And until next time, stay awesome.